What's up guys, welcome back to I Don't Have Time To Work, you're with Luke. Once again, Troy isn't with us this week, he's actually up in Queensland uh, networking at a seminar called Wealthy As Fuck. Look what I found in my pocket, look, a year's salary right here, That's what I call them, fun coupons, see that? A fun coupon! I'm genuinely, genuinely uh, jealous or, yeah, jealous of him being up there because um, I'm at home and I'm a little bit sick in case you can't tell by the by the, the voice. Give me sympathy, please. <coughs> I think I'm getting the black lung, Bob. Um, yeah, so uh, this week we did talk to a couple of people. Well, last week we talked to a couple of people and we wanted to present them to you um, as we usually do on the podcast. Uh, don't forget that every Sunday at 8 p.m. on the I Don't Have Time to Work uh, Instagram, we do go live and we talk to uh, entrepreneurs, business owners, uh, creators, musicians, artists, all kinds of people. Um, we've started doing that uh, through the week as well because obviously we want to work with people's schedules. So if you are someone who doesn't have a schedule where you can't talk on a Sunday night, let us know, DM us, or drop a comment below and we'll get in contact with you. Now up first, uh, we have an amazing person. Um, she's actually part of the reason that we got such a big network of people to talk to. Her name is H Hannah Carlson. She is from the States, um, and Troy randomly DM'd her through Instagram. You know, he's running that networking, he's all about it. Um, and she ended up uh, advising all these, like giving us all these people that we should talk to. And so far, like the people that we've been speaking to over the last couple of weeks have all been through Hannah's networking. It's been truly amazing and we really appreciate her her jumping on board and, and having a chat with us. Now, Hannah Carlson is a PR event coordinator. She's a business support executive, super positive. And as I said, she is the reason we've got a lot of our guests. So we really appreciate it. And I hope you guys enjoy the chat that Troy has with Hannah Carlson. Hello. How are you going? I'm exhausted. Yeah, I would imagine. I'm so would imagine. tired. <laughs> a bit huge week this week. Yeah, a little bit. Lots yeah. of traveling. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah, so. Sorry? No, just this is the life that everybody wants to be traveling yeah. all the time, and I'm complaining. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> oh, it's all good. I mean, you got to take the good with the bad, don't you? Yeah, for sure. That's it, for sure, for sure. Um, hello, and thank you, everyone who's joined us. Aaron, how are you going? Hey, mate. Hey, guys. How are, how's everyone? Um, uh, yeah, so my name is Troy from uh, I Don't Have Time to Work, and I am uh, privileged enough to be talking this morning to the uh, wonderful Hannah Carlson from... Uh, New, New Jersey, how are you? How are you this morning? Feeling good for this evening? Sorry, over there. I keep saying this morning. I'm so confused. I'm living <laughs> in the future here. No, um, you're good. You're speaking for yourself. <laughs> that's really good. I, I touched on really quickly, um, it's a relatively uh, sombre morning over here with the, the tragic passing of, of, of Anthony Bourdain. How's uh, the news going down over there in, in, in America? Well, everyone's touched by him for sure. I know a lot of chefs that have been involved with his work or find him as a leading influencer so they're they're lost by it of course yeah. it's it's kind of the same yeah. effect as avici passing you know the edm community is gonna rise up yeah. and talk about yeah. the positive things and the impact that they had yeah yeah absolutely absolutely yeah no for sure um yeah i mean but that that's all i mean these things happen and it just just shows the importance of uh of mental health and, and, and that kind of thing and, and asking those those loved ones with you, are you okay? And uh, yeah, and touching on those on those subjects. Um, but uh, look, it's it's a sad day, but uh, but we will move on. We've got to push on. Anthony would want us to push on, so let's let's continue the show. Um, so sure. uh, I'm looking. I've just noticed I'm looking a little bit rough today. I should have uh, <laughs> should have gone to the barber yesterday. The beard's a bit out of control this morning. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you, you notice that when you got the the full close up. Um, okay, cool. So, Hannah, um, I'll do a really quick uh, brief rundown on on how we randomly met. I'm going to talk tell the story. I literally like uh, I came across one of your posts. I think it might have been from a Gary V post or something. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. I can't, I can't remember the exact comment what you said. And I literally just connected and I said, hey, 
how are you going? I checked out your page. I did a bit of Facebook stalking and that kind of thing, as you do. And I said, hey, we should connect. We should talk, like, um, uh, in regards to your um, hustling and networking over there uh, in the States. And, look, I'd... Um, for everyone, everyone listening, um, we'd love to hear um, the background, I guess, on your entrepreneurial journey and, and why you took it or was it something that just kind of fell in place for you? Well, I, I wouldn't say like it fell in place. Um, it, it definitely was there. It was something that was inside of me the entire time. Um, I get yeah. it from my dad for sure. My dad is a huge influence and driven spirit he's built his own company he went to college for 13 years and now he's the top five in the world for spinal surgery so he's definitely well, created that drive for me and that inspiration and i wanted to yeah. prove myself and to my family like i i can be the same person um just yeah. a different industry of course so when i was seven actually my sister and i we took little hello kitty notepads and wrote our mom's cell phone number on it saying uh pet services by becca and hannah posted it all around no. the church all around the school yep. and my mom saw it she was like well okay i guess we're babysitting pets now yeah so yeah that that was kind of the <laughs> kickoff <laughs> Kind of like there's, there's little hints like that 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 happen when you're younger, isn't it? Um, I remember with me it was a um, so with video games and and, and I, I am a little bit a uh, little bit older than than you, Hannah, in in my mid thirties. But we had the PlayStation One going through high school, and uh, back then you could actually burn the CDs, so you could actually burn them and like. Um, and so you'd, you'd hire a CD from like a video store back then. I'm so, I'm sound so old now, and you'd go and burn it. This yeah. is really illegal now, but back then it was like, yeah, cool, whatever. I was like 14, and uh, yeah. literally like sell them at school um, to, to mates and stuff. Oh yeah, I can get you this game. It's usually like fifty dollars in the store. Here's the burn copy for ten dollars. And nice. and thinking back now, <laughs> thinking back now, I'm kind of like. Wow, they're, they're that, those kind of things where I'm like, I'm kind of thinking outside the square, not really like doing the norm. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's interesting how that works. Um, how in, uh, just, just touching on that with your, you mentioned your dad there um, and his career and, 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 and your mother and so on. How important is it to have that, that kind of tight knit base around you? I know it doesn't have to be family for everyone, but like just surrounding yourself with people who have the, that same mindset. No, it's absolutely important. Like, you know, you are surrounded by the people that are on the same wavelength as you, that have the same drive, the people that are going to create that positive impact in your life. And what's yep. that quote? Like, you are the, like, same person that you surround yourself with, like, same five people around you or something like that. Yep. So who you yeah, surround yeah, yourself is, with, yeah. you're, you're going to be influenced by, of course. And I definitely encourage everyone to be influenced by the people around them in a positive way, hopefully. Yeah. Absolutely. You are what you eat in, in a yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's cool. And, uh, yeah, and just in regards to that, like, um, I'll, I'll touch really quickly. My name's Troy. From I, I don't have time to work. I'm talking to the lovely Hannah Carlson today. Thank you so much for joining us from over there in the States. No um, problem. Hannah, um, can you give uh, everyone, and, and for the sake of our podcast and the guys that will be listening back on this, a, a brief rundown of your, your business and, uh, and, and what you do? I do a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, you're hardly doing everything. I just see all the time. There's just these photos. You're just sitting around doing nothing, I not know, networking, not I talking know. to people. It's just like, uh, what am I doing with no, my just, life? <laughs> I'll, I'll look at I'm going, Hannah, there she goes, bludging again. What, what what is she doing with her life, Hannah? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, more. yeah, traveling, podcasts all the time. It's, it's great. Yeah. Um, now I do several different things. I definitely believe that having multiple streams of income is very important to everyone, and having a backup just in case if something falls through, or you have a potential nine to five that you have a steady income while you're building your business on the side that allots you time to do that. So right now I have the side business as being a bartender at Top Golf, but I'm building my business, the agency for event coordinating, PR marketing, and brand development. So I have a couple clients that are international, and I work with them exclusively on what their needs are, whether that be finding a venue for their event, finding speakers for them, sponsors, or if a client wants to be featured in a live 
um, TV show or in a magazine like Entrepreneur, Inc., Money Talk, uh, Good Morning America, those live talk shows at night. Um, that's that's what I line up for people. So make that happen. Ooh. And I actually just picked up a new client the other day. One of the Inc. Five Thousand women. She's a CEO of this major company, and she's not really sure how to do branding. So they reached really? out to me, and it was because of social media that they reached out and they said, "You have a great page. You know what you're doing. You have a great following. We need you to do that for her." I'm like, great. I'd love to. <laughs> That's fantastic. And, and uh, I guess for people who are listening, and uh, I guess, you know, sometimes your brain is wired in a certain way. And we talked about before with you, like you writing down that you, you and your sister had pet services um, <laughs> as, a, as a young person. And, and me, I was a little bit naughty at burning video games. Um, yeah. <laughs> but for people who are kind of uh, listening to this and are like, you know, um, you know, they're kind of stuck in that grind and they want to kind of step outside that. Um, what's the kind of, I guess, the, the best kind of advice you would give? Would it be something like, uh, and I know you hear um, leading people say this and entrepreneurs like Gary Vee and so on, but, like, would, it, would you agree is in best to kind of align yourself that if you do have to have a job or well, align yourself with a job that is kind of as close as to what you're trying to do and that way you can kind of, like, use some of those skills that you want to use in the future? Well, of course, yeah. You definitely want to keep it... Um you know, within the same field that you're interested in, especially yeah. for kids that are in the university, in college, whether that be, you know, in Australia, America, Europe, Asia. Yeah. Um, if you are in that state right now, that's the time yeah. for you to be finding internships that pertain to what you want to do. Or yeah. if you're trying to build a business, you need to have that knowledge, some experience at least that you can ref refrain to and have that credibility for. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and you mentioned there before about internship, um, and, and I, I touch on it a lot um, and talk about it a lot as well, is that networking and that kind of thing and just surrounding yourself with people um, who have similar visions, but not just that, just networking. You'd be surprised, you know, if, if you never ask, you're never going to get, are you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that's really yeah. important to have those people around you, the ones that can... Um, you know, inspire or encourage what you're doing. Like my, yep. my parents do not have any connections whatsoever in um, the event space or, or marketing space, but they encourage and try to support as much as possible. But if you do know the people that are in those industries and they're close friends of yours, you can ask them like, hey, I'm really interested in this. Would you be able to hop on a call for an hour and I pick your brain? Great. That's yeah. awesome. You know, that's, that's free mentorship. That's free coaching. If you can find an actual exactly. mentor or a coach, absolutely utilize that. Yeah, yeah, Anna, absolutely, for sure. That's awesome. Cool. And, uh, and uh, I know we mentioned before about that close family group, and I uh, had the pleasure of uh, talking to, to your, uh, I didn't say better half, then I said other half. Uh, Ed, uh, <laughs> early earlier uh, last week, and uh, he was talking about how how important it was with, uh, for him as well that you know you have that partner and that kind of thing, and you got that aligned um, focus, and you kind of bounce things off each other. Um, I'd say based on everything we've, we've we've spoken about, that would be that's that's another key key thing in your progression moving forward. You see. Well, I think so. Um, I mean, not everybody is inclined to have a partner in their life. You yep. definitely need to, you know, love yourself first, love what you do, and build yep. yourself, build your legacy. But if you have that person on the side to support you and encourage you and know what you're going through, then that's a, yep. a bonus, really. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And as you said, like, it's one of those things that, if you do choose to have it, well, then if it can align with those other values and where you're trying to go, then that's then that's a huge thing for sure, yeah. for sure. Um, look, what what would you say is that that? Um, and I won't keep it too much because I know how I know how tired you are um, <laughs> after after a huge week of travelling. Um, but um, I thank you again for talking to us. And for those who may have just joined, my name is Troy from I Don't Have Time to Work here in Australia. Talking to the lo lovely Hannah Carson uh, in the beautiful big land of America um, talking about network marketing and just all things super cool. Um, what would you say would be that kind of, like I know you mentioned um, 
in regards to your, your, your mum and your dad and the influence they had, but was it was it that one piece of information that you've kind of remembered and you thought, you know what, that's something that, that's really inspired me um, uh, moving forward? Or was, was it a, was an, an event maybe like that you may have gone to or something like that perhaps? It actually was an event. Um, it was my first party that I went to in college. It was freshman year, okay. and I was raised um, Southern Baptist, so no drinking, no smoking, no cursing, nothing, right. nothing allowed. So I assumed that no going naughty to no, 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 no. <laughs> so I assumed going <laughs> to college, I would just go crazy, yep. and yep. I walk into my first party. And I look around, I see all these people having a great time. I look at the stage, like this rinky-dink set up a plywood stage with this kid, you know, press and play. But um, it was <laughs> this, this experience that he was creating for everybody. And yeah. I realized, like, I want to be back there. I want to be creating experiences for people, for them to have a memory of whether that be a couple hours, an evening, um, you know, a wedding or Yep. Whatever it it's pertaining to, um, I want to create the best experience possible for anyone that I, I work with. And that, that goes for not just events, but even if I'm just dealing with uh, social media content for them or doing the marketing and setting up a PR interview for them, I want them to make sure yep. that they are taken care of, their needs are met, and they're going to come back because that's how you retain clients. It's through your attitudes and the feeling that you create. Yeah, yeah. It's that old adage, isn't it? The cut. Um, the buyers are the buyers. Who are the buyers? Who are the buyers? Who are the buyers? Isn't it? <laughs> like literally, mm. if you've got your, if you've got this client base that love and respect and really love what you do, then then if you look after them, happy days. Right. That's really good advice. Really good advice. Thank you for everyone who's uh, joined us today, and hello to everyone there. Oh, Ed, Ed's on there. Hey, Ed, how are you, mate? Um, everyone who's joined us there. Yes, Raj, hello, how are you going, guys? Thank you again for joining us. My name's Troy um, from I Don't Have Time to Work, and we're talking to uh, a little tired Hannah Carlson today after her uh, <laughs> galvanning around. Like, she does not not a lot, really. She's just kind of been laying around all day. Yeah. Apparently, she's tired. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so look, um, look, that's, that's great and uh, some really good advice there as well. And uh, as you said, like sometimes it can just be something that, you know, it just clicks in your mind or other times it could be something that you work towards. Um, for anyone who's listening or maybe listening back on this, and you'll probably agree, Hannah, don't, don't wait for that life-changing moment because sometimes it can just literally just be, um, you know, it, it could just be something that you're moving gradually towards. It's not like a defined thing that has to happen in your life, is it? It's just something that can, something you're just working towards it. Yeah, if you're passionate about it, then you keep striving to meet the goal at the end, like, you know, go for the exactly. light at the end of the tunnel. And you're going yeah. to face those challenges, but you're going to find those little celebrations along the way. Be like, okay, like yeah. I'm doing something right. I feel like I'm doing yeah. something great. And that, that was a thing that um, my dad talked to me about recently. Um, it, Brian, oh my word, <laughs> you're killing me with these comments. Um, Looking like my a dad, star. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that um, math class was stupid. Well, I'll have to, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll let you continue your story. That sounds interesting. Agree. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, you know, I respect my dad a lot and finding him the inspiration to what I do and always reverting back to that. Um, I talked to him about what I'm doing and where I'm trying to go. And I actually had a breakdown moment that I, you know, I, I lost a lot and it wasn't just, you know, uh, clients. It was like everything else in my life, like different things that were happening. And I felt like everything was crashing down. And then I, I told them, like, I broke down in front of my family. I'm like, look, like, this is what's happening right now. And my dad was like, you know, this is the moment that you find out if this is what you want to do. Because what I'm seeing from you these past couple of days, you're actually going for something that's difficult and you're not giving up. You could easily give up, but you're passionate about what you're doing. And that's tremendous. Yep. And I'm super proud of you. And I love when he says that because it means so much to me. And I always tell him, like, Dad, you're the reason why I have this entrepreneurial spirit. And he's like, that's exactly what you have. Like, I got it from my dad, and now you're getting it from yep. me. So, yeah. That, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. 
That's super inspiring as well. That's 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 really good. Thank you for sharing that with us, Hannah. Um, and I mean, anyone who's who's listening out there, um, like we've touched on before, and, and Hannah's mentioned there, it's it's her dad that inspires you. But it really, as we said, it doesn't have to be a, a family member. I know people grow up, they don't know who their mum and dad is, things like that. They don't have mm-hmm. close family. Um, you, there's always someone there that you can connect with, and there's always someone you can reach out. Uh, reach out to and look by all means if you're listening to this video in 24 hours or in a year or in 20 years time reach out to us talk to us we'd love to yeah love to hear about you, Jeff. i love when people about. dm me i love it i actually had an interview yesterday or the day before yeah. i don't even know I'm, i feel like i i went international yeah. right now my time zones are just off <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But yeah. uh yeah, I was on that podcast and we we're talking about like networking and like yep. how how good I'm I'm doing with everyone connecting with the podcasters. I just do it solely over Instagram. Everyone I network with is over Instagram. They're like, "Why do you yep. why do you take the time to take like those calls and random people that ask you for favors?" I'm like because everyone has potential and somebody yep. may not see it. I want to encourage the people that are passionate and I'll take that time, no matter what, to yep. incur somebody's passion and drive to get to their goals. And if I can help them even with a, another connection that I have, great, then I help yep. them. That's awesome. I don't have to be like funding them or being there to hold their hand the entire time, but taking yep. an, a call, 30 minutes to an hour, just discussing what they're passionate about, and I can see that, then I'm, I'm yep. willing to do it. Yep, no, absolutely. And uh, I can actually uh, uh, agree that Hannah does do that because I did that exact uh, experience <laughs> and randomly DM'd Hannah. Um, yeah, so um, no, that's awesome. Uh, and to give everyone a quick brief background on what we're doing here at I Don't Have Time to Work, we are creating a uh, online network um, and a directory, shall we say, for hustlers all around the world. And Hannah's been uh, kind enough to be be part of our, our crazy family. So thank you very much for that. Like you have crazy no idea when you, start, when you start to be mates with Australians, like crazy things can happen. And, and I'm uh, so excited uh, Ed, to visit. <laughs> Ed, Ed mentioned the other day, he goes, when you come over, man, you'll have to, uh, I'm sure we can have a beer. Do you want to have a beer? I'm like, uh, dude, I'm Australian. Um, um, yeah, that's we, my coffee. We, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, we're not alcoholics. But we do like to socialise, and we love to uh, we love to chat over over a beverage. So, Hannah, mm-hmm. look, thank you very much. Um, I really appreciate um, you taking time um, this week. I, you've been super busy, and you have been uh, really open, and you've helped us out um, starting our community. And uh, I know it's just going to get bigger and bigger. And have people like you on board is awesome. For sure, super blessed. Cool. Thanks again, Hannah, and. Uh, have a, have a great weekend, um, and uh, I'm sure we'll chat soon. We'll have to catch up. All right. Well, thank you so much for having cool. me, Troy. Have a great day. You. Thanks, Anna. You too. See you later. All Bye-bye. Right. Bye. Man, that's just like she's so she's so positive. I really, really love it. Um, you know, uh, just the way that she's, she's just like, yeah, I just want to do as much as I can for people. I love that. I love that. It's what our community is all about. Um, thanks a lot. Let us know if you like that um, that interview down in the comments uh, or if you're on our podcast um, or our Instagram, just send us a DM. Uh, next up, we spoke to uh, Leo, Leo DePinto. Now, Leo DePinto is a radio host, a luxury real estate agent, a marketing specialist, and an optimizer. Now, if you don't know what an optimizer is, you definitely need to watch this interview because I'm telling you, he explains it and it's the best thing ever. If you're someone who's struggling on Instagram or you're someone someone who wants to be an influencer, you need to listen to what he, he's got to say. It was an incredibly, incredibly awesome and mind-opening conversation that we had. Check it out. Let us know if you like it. Here he is. There he is. There you go, man. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? Good, good. How are you? Good, good, bro. Good. It's good to see you, man. I see that you're in. You're in at the radio, are you? So yeah, I do. Like, can you hear me well? Or yeah, yeah, I can hear you clear. Okay. Loud and clear. Can you hear me? So yeah, yeah, I can hear you very well. So you know, it's. Uh, I do a show every Tuesday morning and every uh, Friday evenings, and so you know. And today I, I'm using the location. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's always good to get that location. At the moment, I'm in my 
home office just hanging out. <laughs> so, Loving it. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's it. Sometimes you got to do it where you, where you got to do it. Uh, yeah. Carlos is on one of our one of our favorite followers. Carl, Carlos jumps on all the time. We like love to say hello to him every time he's on there. Uh, thanks for jumping on. Um, so I guess we'll get straight into it. We won't keep you for too long. Obviously, it is a Tuesday, so we've all got things to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, so tell us a bit about yourself. So I'm a real estate agent, and uh, as every real estate agent, like I am uh, that kind of guy that, uh, you know, uh, always looking like for new uh, ways to improve uh, my presence without like, you know, uh, using the traditional methods. And that's probably why you guys like came to me and said, hey, let's talk about it. What you doing? Like, you know, you look weird. I was like, thank you guys. But you know, that's yeah. how we do it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so stand, standing out from the pack, kind of doing it, doing it your own way. Right. That's so, awesome. So yeah, I was, I was actually very, 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 I'm trying to find a new position because uh, I want you guys to see my lovely Italian face. I'm probably gonna keep it like this. So you know. go. That's there. We go. We can see how handsome you are now. <laughs> oh, that's that's uh, that, that's our after two hours of makeup and prayers to <laughs> to the gods. Please let me look better. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. So thank you for uh, for having me today. And uh, yeah, I'm here to every question. Please like uh, let me know and uh, um, let's talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for joining us as well. We really appreciate it. You know, we've been speaking to a lot of awesome people on the I Don't Have Time to Work uh, podcast. Now, if anyone doesn't know what, what we do, we actually just speak, speak to uh, like-minded people when it comes to entrepreneurialism, uh, uh you know, artists, creative, musicians, anyone who's uh, basically getting outside of that normal kind of nine to five, working for the man kind of thing. Um, so if you're if you're new to this and you want to talk to us, send a, send us a message um, and make sure that you follow us. Um, and any people that we talk to, definitely definitely follow them as well. Um, now, when um, you were talking about doing stuff different with real estate, um, now is there anything in particular that you've used? Uh, that has been like the best thing or that's kind of changed your trajectory as a, as a real estate agent? Okay. I believe you guys want to know what I'm doing so that can like, you know, be utilized and be used by everybody else. Is that correct? That's, uh, right, yeah, yeah. Okay. We're, we're, all, we're, we're all about the sharing economy. We want to be able to share. I'm going to I'm gonna be very blunt with you guys. So I'm from Italy. Yep. I moved here for five years ago. And I was competing with the biggest Aussie agents on the planet. So you yeah. have to understand that I come from a place where uh, real estate uh, is, is uh, people don't move. People give the house to, to, to the son, to the nephew, to the, so it's a weird concept for me to, to be working in. Then what happened? I started to, um, to sell coffee as, a, as the first thing that I ever did. But uh, I started to do it in the Italian way. The Italian way that everybody thinks is like, you know, this mafia style situation. It's completely yeah. wrong. The mafia way. No, I'm, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's, you know, let's break some stereotypes down. The mafia way is, uh, is the wrong one. Meanwhile, the Italian way is the family way where you try treat like everybody involved in your daily like routine as a member of your family with the same respect, with the same like, if I promise you something, I'm going to keep the promise. So I started to, for example, they gave me, they said to me, Leo, we don't need any barista. I was like, okay. I was like, why? And they say to me, well, we don't need it because uh, behind the, the, uh, the machine, there are already three baristas and you would be the fourth one. And I was like, okay, I can see that you have a machine over there in the corner. Can I use that one in front of the shop on a different cart and uh, I'll make my own wage? And they say to me, what do you mean? And I was like, well, give it to me. I'll make a cart. So I started to play with the wood and stuff like that. And I said, okay, um, I'll put the cart on and I'll create my own clientele. The people that cannot come into the into the coffee shop, the people that are on the streets, let me build my, my thing. Oh, Leo, but in Australia, it doesn't work like that. I was like, okay. We started the first day, we made $30. Actually, I paid $30 because I had to, uh, to um, build up a little bit of our uh, image. 
after a month, I was making five hundred and fifty dollars, and excluding like you know my wage, so I was paying myself. They say to me, Leo, like uh, thank you so much, and uh, do you want to buy the car? In that moment, I said, you know what, I can't be doing this for for a long time. I want to do something different. I want to make more money. I want to be like uh, if I can sell coffee to to these people I can sell sell something more and then I started to sell machine for coffee and then on top of that I was like okay what is the next step that can make myself uh, be prouder what is the next step the step that can make my like you know my uh, little Italian butt <laughs> go from step one to step seven and that's that's when it clicked me I want to sell real estate real estate has been like the 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 moment that everything started to switch on uh, i started struggling and they they were they said to me go door knocking go and take the phone and i was like okay i can do that but if a dude from italy comes to your place and says hi ciao my name is leo i want to sell can i sell your house people were of course they were like look uh, don't worry about it like you know what i mean like the, it was like a little bit of a uh, I'm I'm from overseas and I understand that perfectly. If an Australian guy goes to my mom, my mom is gonna be like, okay, uh, police. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. you know it's a different situation. So I was like, okay, where can I find the strength? Where can I find the best way to to play on my strength? And all of a sudden, I realized that everybody was talking about social media social media social media and everybody every time they started to talk to me they say to me for example ciao oh ciao leo ciao blah 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 i was like here you go i've got the sentence i've got the the presence i'm gonna spam this like there's no tomorrow so i started to literally going crazy on the social media i started to go crazy on uh, playing the strength playing the, um, the brand that was, uh, that, you know, that I'm trying to create because, you know, there's a lot of work in, uh, involved and still I'm like uh, far miles away from, sorry guys, my arm is getting a little bit tired. Um, I was like miles away from, uh, from uh, perfect. So what I did is I was like, okay, what we're gonna do here, we're gonna start to put all my ideas all in the same container. Real estate agencies are struggling with exposure. I know how to bring exposure to me. Let's put it together. Let's package and let's deliver to people. And that's exactly what we're doing with videos, real estate um, uh, content. But also, I'm not using real estate content to promote my real estate content. I'm using people that are not from the industry. Because if you see a post of a house sold, uh, come open house, whatever. I invite all the people watching at this specific moment to go to my, um, to my Instagram account and have a look what's what I'm doing. I'm using influencers com from a completely different world. I'm using influencers and people that are actually um, having like a different uh, approach on life because if you have marketing sales to us, if you have to sell a car, it's better to be promoted by an olive doctor. Is that correct? That's and right. that's, that's the thing. So I had a, a one step more. So for example, in Italy, I did marketing. Everybody talks about the first degree marketing or uh, I have a product and I sell it to you. Second degree marketing, you have a product, product I sell it for you. And I am tr trying here to, to push the third degree marketing. Third degree marketing is you have a product. I am selling for you, but I'm going to make the product look good by someone else. That's what influencers should be. He is talking about me selling you. And that's yeah. where you create organic reach. That's where you create the bloody trust and and also you create like that passion on people to click and go to every single like page that you are talking on. This yeah. is literally the reason why real estate agencies are failing on using Instagram. Yeah.
definitely. Definitely and, because they uh, you know, can't, can't set themselves aside because they're, they're just they're looking exactly the same as any, everyone else and they can't kind of get a, a, a head of the pack. Correct. It's called third degree marketing. So I, bl- I claim this because I'm, it's literally my strategy and I claim this because I'm proud of it. People use first degree, second degree. I'm using third degree marketing. And I actually created a new name. Okay. There are producers that make the product, influencers that influence the influence. Sorry, the the the, 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 the you know the affluence of people, and yep. people like me and people like you listening. Or that you're gonna use this strategy. They're gonna be the optimizers. You are an optimizer. That person that uh, optimizes all this uh, like fluctuation of people into one focal point. The optimizers, yeah. I, I claim this. I honestly do because awesome. it's uh, it's uh, it's one of those uh, it's one of those roles that it's like a unicorn. Everybody knows that it's there, but nobody like gave a name to it. So the optimizer is the person that takes like advantage in that specific situation of uh, directing the message. I can be an influencer. I cannot be an optimizer. Someone can use me to to help them. And this is yeah. beautiful. This is amazing. Because then in that way, you don't mix everything. And so everybody has the chance to be successful in their own strategy. That's why. So And then you, Luke, uh, by the way, nice to meet you because this is the first day that we are talking. Yes. Yeah, so. um, if you say to me, Leo, I've got like, a, I want you to be an influencer for this specific product or this specific podcast, you in this specific stage are the optimizer. Like you yeah. don't realize that, but you are. You are the yeah. person making it happen. So yeah. the director, the, the, the main switch is the optimizer. So that's why we start, we should start to use this term. And yes, if you ask me, would you be mentioned if I do that? Absolutely. Because honestly, honestly, it's not being cocky. It's not being like, you know, it's just because like, I'm proud of something that can help literally everybody. Absolutely. It's, it's one of those things that if we realize we're going to use it better and better and better. And I, I just started to scratch the surface of this, like, you know, a uh, new way to have a look at this approach. Yeah, definitely. Look, the, you've actually already answered my next question. I, I was actually going to ask you about the importance of networking, but you really just like covered that completely in that first question. So that's awesome. It's all about like getting in contact with people and making sure that you're on the same wavelength and uh, using optimizers, which we're, we're going to, we're going to start using that now. Don't worry. We'll let, we'll let everyone know where it came from though, for sure. <laughs> no. Okay. Look, the, the secret is this. We've been doing, okay. In Venice, in the old Venice, you know, when the, when Venice was the biggest city in the world for, uh, for, uh, uh, trades. Yeah. There was a, there was a technique that they used to have to build a new public, um, a new public, um, I don't know, like harbor or like a building or a bridge, they would have need, you would have needed to put an application that would have lasted 30 years. 10 years for the project, 10 years for building, and 10 years to test it. With this specific model, you add to, you add to have people helping you keep the the project alive because for so long there was a risk that everything would have gone sideways right yeah so in the end in the end this technique uh, allowed uh venice to to put in place for 500 years one of the biggest and strongest uh fleets in the mediterranean sea yeah everybody in italy knows that Everybody in Italy knows that there's no me without we. And that's yeah. like, that is like, uh, and everybody that believes that the biggest CEO in the world or the biggest people in the world are doing it by themselves, they are completely wrong. Everybody can make it. And, and uh, you know what? 
if you make it, I'm going to be happy because I know that you know me. And when, like, you know, it's, you never know what's going to happen. You never yeah. know what's going to happen. Yeah. That's it, dude. You've, you've absolutely nailed it. I, I love it. And we're all about the sharing economy and we're all about, like, making sure that people are being, like, as we're coming up or if they're going up, we're helping each other up, you know, step by step. It's awesome. Now, um, something that we talk about a lot on the, uh, on the podcast is uh, a positive mental attitude. How important is that to you? I'm going to make it. <laughs> every time, every time, every time that someone, I was thinking about it like yesterday. You know, many things went wrong yesterday. You have no idea. I lost two contracts. Um, uh, I'm over, always on the verge of being fired from my from my like you know vendors because you know they are, they want results. They wanted yesterday, but yeah. you know what happens all the time that survival mode kicks in. Sure. And that's why I started all of this, what I'm doing. Like, because survival mode kicks in and you are always, um, like, looking for the best option. Because if I have to go down, I want to go down on my terms. Yeah, absolutely. That's a really, really good way of putting it. It really, really is. And, I mean, I guess this is something that, like, you know, my partner Troy talks about a lot is, you know, we go into these, um, you know, as entrepreneurs and business owners and creators and things like that. Ultimately, the worst thing that ha that happens is you go down, you get a you get a bullshit job, and then you start again. You know, you, you, you keep going. You know what? When I started, I also drive. Uh, I was driving Uber for a while. Yeah. Actually, not even Uber. Uber Eats. You know yeah. why? Because I couldn't be uh, nominated for uh, because you only have to be like permanent resident, whatever. I was not even like you know that. Mm. So yep. in my in my uh, Uber Eats situation, I was like uh, thinking, what can I do best? What can I do best? What can I do best? What can I, what, what can I do for my job? And I was like thinking all the options. Can I get a um, uh, job that pays me week by week or I'm going to risk it? You know what? Every time I thought that the, the, uh, every uh, just the idea of me going to work for this place every day and being paid, I was like inside burning like, I don't know, like uh, anything else in the world because, because like it would have killed me to, yeah. to don't have the chance to be successful on my own terms. And then what? You are doing like, honestly, I believe that everybody's trying to do this should drive Uber Eats. And I already freaking have like you know the I, I don't know if i can uh, swear you, from this you can definitely swear yeah 100 percent, definitely swear we we actually encourage swearing i already fucking have the 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 title of my book right wow okay from well, uber eats to yeah. uber reach fuck that's good <laughs> if fuck, that's anybody good. listening that's my title. I, I claim that. Don't don't freaking use it because I'm gonna come after you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've because you know everyone that's watching. So if anyone steals it, we can go after him. <laughs> no, we are we are suing the shit out of you. No, just get, but this is the thing. Like you talk about positive. How can I not be positive? Like I could die tomorrow. People are dying for terminal disease. Like everybody is forgetting that it's only money. And I know I have to repeat myself. I have to repeat that to myself every day. But fuck, what can we do? I, I come from Italy. Like people here, like there are struggling. Like houses are selling for 20 fucking thousand dollars. Yeah. And then you say to me, oh, how can you be positive? You live in Australia, the best place in yeah. the yeah. world to be right now. Not even the US. I would mm. If I have the chance, I would say, yeah, actually, Australia is the only place in the world that's giving me the chance to actually express myself. Yeah, yeah. We, we talk about it like every every week about how lucky we are in Australia. And we, we have a, a quite a, um, uh, uh, we, we have a lot of negativity within within our media and a lot of negativity within our, um, our society where people think that, I think there's a lot of entitlement where they think that they should be somewhere when they're, they're, they're not, but they haven't put the work in. Um, there's a lot of people that don't really want to do the work. 
Um, but we're here to change that. We want to tell people that you can do the work, you can stay positive, that you can succeed on your own terms, which I love the way that you put that. One, one last thing. Yeah. To be a real estate agent, there are two ways. Or you have the license and uh, uh, you have only commission, commission only, or yeah. you get the license and the real estate agency pays you like a little bit of money, but the, the, min, the, the, the commission is very low. So you are working for the man again. Sure. This is exactly what I'm talking about. Who fucking cares about the money that you are making now? weekly yeah. just like do something else in the meanwhile how free are you from yeah. one to ten who fucking cares and then what someone is gonna see me then i'm uber uber eating like you know uh, around they should be fucking jealous of me you yeah. not jealous of like I, I should not be embarrassed at all because i'm making 700 fucking dollars a, a, a week and plus and plus if I sell houses and I have the energy to do it, I'm gonna fucking make like uh, commissions on top, on top, on top. I'm untouchable. What, do you wanna fire me? Well, do it. I'm gonna go and drive the car. Who cares? Everybody's got a car. Yeah. That's it, dude. I love that. Um, <laughs> it, it puts everything into perspective. Like, I think a lot of people like tend to want to do everything either 100% or 0%. So the way that you're saying it, I, I absolutely love it. I, my next question was going to be what's next for you, but we already know that because you're going to write a book and it's going to be called cool no. The Uber Rich. <laughs> now, so what, what's the, next the book? For you? Okay, the book is um, the book is the, in probably like 30 years. Okay. That's my goal. That's my final goal. So my goals are very realistic. I know for a fact that I need to sell houses, I need to sell homes. And that's what I wanted to do. And then I want to invest the money and buy stuff. I'm telling everybody, you are fucking renting for $20,000 a year. Giving the money to someone that you don't know, you can buy something with that kind of money, with $350 a week. And then you have something that is going to make you money. You own something. So what I want to do is I want to tell everybody that... Uh, it is possible to start to make money. You don't know yet, but you can do it. You can really, really, really do it. Even if you borrow a car, it's easy. If you lease a car and you are paying $200 like a week, and then you like Uber for literally $400 a week, you're already making $200 fucking dollars. You're already making money. I, I, like, yeah. You know that Uber is not in Italy, right? They don't have it. Oh, oh, it's impossible oh. to make money. Mm, I didn't know that. Guys, you have it. You have it so good. We have it so good. Australia is... Let's, like, I am surprised that everybody is struggling sometimes because I'm like, talk to me. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what it is. Because, like, that's why everybody wants to come here. That's why it's so bloody difficult. Because it is heaven for at least another five, ten years. It is so good that you have no idea. Petrol in Italy, it's three and a half dollars, something like that. It's ridiculous. You can do stuff here. You can make money. And you guys, you know, it's just like put a little bit of time. It's just about time. You're not going to be, you're not going to have time for a long time. You know that, right? Yeah. If, if someone comes to you tomorrow and says, hey, you are dying in six months, you're gonna be, I would be like, fuck. Like, why did I waste so much time? Yeah. And that's pretty much it. That's awesome. Dude, thank you so much. Um, but we're going to wrap it up here. I'm going to ask you one more question. Leo, thank you so much for, for jumping on. Um, we appreciate all of our followers coming on as well. Uh, I'm Luke for, from I Don't Have Time to Work, and we've obviously got Leo. Make sure you go over to his Instagram and follow him, um, and this will be up on our podcast uh, next week as well. So the last question that we'd like to ask everyone is, what's one piece of advice for all our viewers and your viewers that you give if they were ready to jump out into the, into the entrepreneurial landscape or to become a real estate agent? This is the thing that I say to everybody that it's afraid to ask, ask someone for a favor, for a discount, for 
I ask discounts also for a Coke at McDonald's. You know what is the, the answer? Is don't be afraid of a no, because what's the, the worst that can happen? It's just a no. Yeah. Don't worry about it. It's just a no. Yeah. Just go for it, man. Dude, that is absolutely fucking perfect. Leo, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We really appreciate it. Uh, everyone, make sure that you go over and follow Leo. He's uh, such a positive and awesome dude. Uh, he's also really handsome to look at, so I don't know if you've uh, noticed that. Uh, thank you so much for coming on and telling your story, and we'll definitely get you back on very, very shortly. We're going to see you soon, guys. Ciao. See ya. Bye. Ciao. Well, that's it, guys. Another week of the I Don't Have Time to Work podcast. I've been Luke. Troy won't be back next week. He'll be back the week after. Um, and I'm, I'm really missing him, to be completely honest with you. You know, I, I can't wait to get, you know, it's really good to collaborate with people. But I don't mind talking directly to you guys as well. Um, once again, make sure you follow us on all our socials. We've got everything. Basically, if it's got some kind of social media platform, we're on it. Uh, let us know in the comments if you're liking what, what you see. And also, don't forget to subscribe. Like the video if you like what you see, and also hit the bell so you get uh, a, an update when, when the new videos come out. We'll see you next week.